Welcome back everybody. Today I have a special project that I've been wanting to work on for the last few weeks. You see a lot of folks have recently asked where the awning on top of my minivan camper went. And the answer is that before I went on my trip this summer, I removed it because I was traveling in the Northeast and I removed it for two reasons. First, I did not expect to have the opportunity to use it throughout the summer, and so I didn't want to just add unnecessary wear and tear to the awning. And then second, I really didn't want the awning to stand out where I was at in Michigan. I figured if I was going to do any stealth camping, I wanted to be as stealth as possible. But last week I got the opportunity of a lifetime and I was just about to put the awning back on top of the minivan camper when I got an excellent offer from a friend of mine to buy their awning, which for the 150 bucks that he wanted for his old awning was too good of a deal for me to pass up. So in today's video, I'm gonna try to mount that longer awning on top of my Toyota Sienna no build minivan camper. And so here they are kind of side by side. The Yakima Slim Shady has been on my minivan camper since around 2019 when I bought it directly from Yakima. That awning I believe was four or 500 bucks at the time. So it wasn't a cheap buy. And then on top is this new one that I got off my buddy for 150 bucks. And this is a 230 brand awning. As you can see, this Yakima Slim Shady awning is a lot shorter than this 230 awning. This one I believe is six feet. And then this one I believe is 89 inches. And so by replacing the shorter awning with the longer one, I'll be able to extend my footprint, allowing a little bit of rain protection under the front door if I need to get in and out of it. Actually, the Yakima Slim Shady awning is 6.5 feet by 6.5 feet. And I was only able to step outside of this sliding door and then use a few feet around that area to do things that I enjoy doing, such as cooking and sitting out beside the minivan while I'm out camping. I'll do the exact math on the dimensions later. However, the footprint of the Yakima Slim Shady is just around 49 square feet, which is seven times seven or 6.5 times 6.5. So even a little smaller, maybe 46 square feet. While the new 230 is almost 64 square feet, which basically means that's about one and a half times larger than the Slim Shady. And yes, 150 bucks sounds like an amazing deal, but what I did not get with this new awning is the feet to attach the awning to either my roof rack rails or some other rails, such as the side rails on top of the van. And what I want to try to do today is to use the rails from the Yakima Slim Shady to attach the 023 or the 230 awning to these OEM Toyota Sienna roof rack rails. I am gonna have a little bit of problems or possibly some fabrication to do because the gap here for this awning is about two inches or one and three quarter inches, while the gap here is about one and a half to one and three quarter inches. And the problem with that is when I take these brackets off, and try to put them here, they're not gonna line up properly. But because I wanna make this job as simple as possible, I am gonna go ahead and at least try to use those brackets first. Otherwise, I may have to buy some new roof rack rails, and the ones that I found that work with this awning turn out to be around 300 bucks. And adding 300 bucks to this project may not be worth it, and it's a lot of money to spend just to upgrade the footprint under the awning that I only use a couple of times a year anyway. I think that's either a half inch or a 9 16th nut holding that bracket onto those feet. But just to make sure I don't have to make multiple trips to my toolbox, I'm gonna get my strip of sockets and my ratchet so that I can get that thing off and at least see if those brackets work together. And in case anybody's wondering, this is my old socket set that I bought at AutoZone probably about 25 years ago when I first started working on vehicles. I got such an excellent deal on this awning because my buddy had bought a travel trailer that came with it on it. And he does a lot of camping with his family. And so he wanted an awning that was one of those 360 awnings or 270 awnings that went all the way around his trailer so that his family could all have a great place to hang out while he's out camping. 
And so as most of you watching this channel know, a minivan camper is not exactly a family friendly camping setup. I mean, don't get me wrong, if you plan to take a tent with you while you're out camping and you have a couple of small kids and use your minivan really as a space for them to be while using something like a tent to augment your camping setup, then this could be an excellent option for that. But if you wanna camp in the vehicle or in the trailer, this thing is a little tight. Okay, so I was hoping, maybe let's see. So I'm gonna have to slide the feet off the ends here, which isn't a huge deal, but I was hoping that I would just be able to twist that off. So this thing is a much more secure than I expected it to be, which is not a problem, but it may give us problems when I try to use those feet here. And Spires must love making a little web under this thing here because there are several dead spiders on that thing. And I have several old Yakima keys laying around. So I assume that this was locked, preventing this thing from spinning, but I guess it was just unlocked the whole time and no one has ever stolen my awning. And now it'll be easy to just pull that off so I can try to manipulate these feet a little easier. I think this is one of those situations where I've asked nicely long enough for this screw to come undone. And, oh, oh no. It's finally out. So let's see if this thing will at least go in this slot. And then from there, we can see that we have quite a bit of overlap between this aluminum bracket and this bracket right here. And so what I think I'm gonna do is get some self-tapping screws and just screw those in there. I don't feel like this thing is at risk of coming off at all. And I think just by adding a couple of short self-tapping screws, I'll be able to make sure that this thing is secured safely on here. So I guess for this modification, I'm gonna treat this like a phone a friend. Let me know in the comments. Do you think if I use some nice screws that aren't too long, that'll make this a safe awning on my vehicle? Or should I be worried and spend the $350 on the new rails? So this 230 awning did come with some brackets that look like this, as well as the appropriate nuts and bolts to mount this bracket to that. And so another possible answer to that problem would be to mount these brackets either like this or possibly like this on this uh, roof rack, this factory OEM roof rack. However, I don't like the stability here because I feel like that could shift. And then here, I feel like the actual material of the awning will rest on the paint of the vehicle, possibly causing paint issues. And so although I think that uh, the exhaust U-bolts uh, or something like that might make the perfect solution for this awning, I think ultimately I'm gonna end up doing what I'm doing now. And the only other concern I have with this mounting foot is that this component right here might be too narrow to safely secure itself inside of this rail and so if this comes undone then the awning might fall so this will sit on the bracket like that the awning will hang here so as i've been studying that bracket a little more carefully the bolt holes are the parts that hold the main force of the awning and i feel like the four bolt holes going across the top will be sufficient to hold the awning in while those little lips essentially prevent the awning from twisting uh, forwards and backwards. And so like I said, I am really curious what you guys think in the comments. I do feel like I will induce a little bit of an angle by resting this this way, but those four bolts will be safe and secure inside of these channels. One, two, and then three and four on that side. So let me get this thing mounted up and let's see how it looks. All right guys, so I'm not exactly giving up, but the bolts that I have, the shoulders on them are just a little too narrow. And what I mean by that is, I don't want them to pull through when they're torqued down. And since I won't have those eight points of contact and only the four points of contact, what I wanna do is pause on this for now and see if I can get the eight bolts that I need so that I can make sure this thing is safely set up before I go anywhere with it. So I did a little bit of research and I confirmed that the nuts and bolts that I have 
are the proper size. I was worried about having those eight points of contact, but in fact, the awning only had two points of contact on each of its two brackets, and I'm retaining two points of contact with my setup. So, unless my roof rack fails, I don't expect the awning brackets to fail. The nuts that came with the bracket are also those silicone locking nuts, so there's almost no chance that they will back out after they have been torqued properly. So let's get this thing mounted to the roof and see how it feels. So in the past, I had two sets of roof rack crossbars that I used, one for the solar panel and one for the awning, but this thing is still holding up pretty good. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and mount the awning directly to this set right here. I wanted to make sure that I lined up the back of this awning with the lift gate on the van because if those contact after they're mounted, it could damage the van. So if you're out and about and you see my van, please don't steal my awning because uh, I don't have the keys for these brackets anymore. But let's go ahead and twist this on. Let me see if that'll match perfectly or not. <clears throat> So I think we might have a perfect fit. I've got about a one to two inch gap between the lift gate and the awning. My only concern is the knobs that hold these crossbars on had to come off so that the feet, the old Yakima feet could properly secure to the roof rack crossbar. Now this thing is on tight, it's secure. Those are the OEM crossbars, so I'm not too worried about them breaking or falling apart. And then I just have to make sure not to lose these two caps for if I ever pull the awning off. I'll continue to adjust this just to make sure that I have it on there nice and secure, and I'll test it out a little bit. My main concern is I don't want the feet from the old Yakima awning to come loose, and so I am gonna look for the key to see if I can find that key and lock those feet into place. Now this front of the awning definitely sticks out much more than I thought, but it is still perfect relative to the size of the minivan it doesn't stick over the front windshield which is something i didn't want it to do and i suppose if i meet any other minivan campers that have a similar awning we can probably do some uh deep forest jousting with those awnings <laughs> but in all seriousness i'm more satisfied with how this awning mounted to the roof rack crossbars than how the yakima awning did and the main reason for that is is that this 230 awning is much more narrow in its stowed configuration. So my Yakima would hang and almost touch the paint. It didn't touch the paint, so it wasn't damaging it, but this one is about an inch or two higher on the minivan than the other one was. We'll see how that plays out as I'm going through the woods, if this is more prone to snagging obstacles, or if this is something that's not gonna actually be a problem for me. I think that about does it for my install of this 230 awning. And in my next camping trip, I will fully set this out so you guys can see how it performs in some real weather outside while I'm minivan camping. And a lot of times when I'm camping, I get out into those forests and I do get some pinstripes on the side of the van. They're not a huge deal, but I have a whole lot of fun when I go out camping in the wilderness. Now I'm not sponsored by either 230 or Yakima. I just like to have an awning on the side of my minivan camper. And if you want to find out any additional details about either of those awnings, I'll leave some links in the video description. And finally, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. I'm close to getting to 100,000. The awning feels so stable that I almost forgot to tighten the bolts. So let me get those nuts tightened up so I can make sure absolutely that I don't lose this thing going down the road.